said I shouldn't go there, fine. I will explain uh, the answer to your question. Um, we need to ask ourselves as to why are we there where we are today. The reason is simple. We are there where we are today because we have never provided leadership. Leadership that is there for the people. Leadership that is there to create wealth for the people. Leadership that is there to create fairness that create governance that is for everyone else. And that's where the problem is. And that leadership is in the hands of every Zambian. Every Zambian, inclusive of the witnesses, if they stood up, they clear to make sure they put the leadership that cares for all of us, these problems will be done. You, you've seen, I, I try to give examples myself of a country like uh, the Emirates in Dubai, where actually they have nothing. They had nothing. They are, they, 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 apart from sand and, and, and oil and salty water, For me, this they have seems... transformed, let me finish it, yes. they have transformed into something that is very powerful today. Why? Because the leadership has got a vision, they are principled, they have got integrity. Ourselves, we have everything you can talk about, every wealth you can talk about, we have failed because we can't manage. The leadership is not there. Like I said earlier, like I said earlier President Yonder, we'll get to the nitty gritties of, 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 uh, of, of all those issues that you intend to do you know, for the people of Zambia when you form government in 2021. I'm particularly interested in, in this particular issue because uh, I've got a number of Jehovah's Witnesses that I called and you know, asked them why they don't get to vote and, and, and everything like that. But then, listening to you speak on TV, uh, just a, a clip that we played, it, it tells me that you're looking down on the intelligence of the Jehovah's Witnesses, like they don't know what they're doing. No, no not necessarily. It will be, you, you see, I cannot go and, uh, and go and beg for them to think the otherwise when I'm looking down at them. Then, then I don't think properly. I'm just pleading with them. I'm pleading with them to look at this problem. You know, it's, it's like this, Mr. Mwansa. You see a child is dying there and you've got the willpower to save. You can save that child. Would you not do it? You do it. De definitely the, the, the witnesses, they are seeing children are dying, mothers are dying, fathers are dying. People are dying mm. because we don't have leadership. And, and they, they have got the power to change it. They have power to sell, to solve. That's what I'm well, asking. Your job as I'm, don't I'm, believe in the power of man to sort out the problems on earth. I'll give an example. Uh, one of the Jehovah's Witnesses says, we follow the example of Jesus who refused to accept political office. That is in John uh, 6 verse 15, where he taught his disciples not to be part of this world. Are you telling the people in the Jehovah's Witnesses church uh, to abandon the teaching of Jesus Christ? That is what you're doing. It's totally not right. This is not right. I, I, I do give not think scripture. there are lots of things that I, I can, can give you relate. Mark 12, verse 13 to 17. Yes. You can read that particular scripture yes, and yes. get why they don't get to participate you know, in the voting. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So all other Christians who are participating in voting, they don't follow the Bible. That's what you want to tell me. <laughs> I, I mean, that's what you are telling me. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to believe so. Um, yes. Like you said, every other religion, every yes. other denomination has got yes. its own, uh, you know, you know, set of, of doctrines. Yes, the doctrine but, but of, you know, I, I, I don't different. want to insult people, but if there is something that doesn't make sense, we should leave it and go for something that makes sense. I keep on keep giving out this example. Mm. I have a child there who is about to die. I have a mother there who is about to die. Mm. And I've got the willpower. I can't change. I can't save that person. I will say no. Because the, uh, God says um, the problems on earth should not be so solved by man. So God will solve it. God doesn't work like that. God works through people. That's our, how what spiritual I think. Are you, President? How, how spiritual are you to understand uh, uh, you you know, the you see, of, of the things of the Bible? You see, that's where the problem is. I think we are all, uh, we, we, every human being, in one way or another, he believes in God. Every human being. Mm -hmm. They may tell you this and this and this. Try, even the guy who is, a, who is a, how, how do you call those guys who don't believe in the Bible? Yes, yes. The time that is about to die, Azagamba, my God, oh my, oh, my God. You see, he comes back, we all come back to God. So you're trying uh, to scrap off um, doctrine, because I think this is a doctrine that is followed globally. No Jehovah's Witnesses get to vote. But then, you just come, and you're pleading with them that, look, what mm. you've been believing in 
to some extent is not right because there are people that are dying, there are people that uh, are plundering you know, our natural resources. And only if you could decide to participate in this uh, governance, mm. things would change. But Ms. you're going against Mr. Amwansa, I'm just being open. Let's be open with ourselves. If you go in market today, uh, you've got a certain number, a very good number, 25-30% of Jehovah's Witnesses selling in the markets. What the, the people have done, the, 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 the cutters have done now, the PF cutters, if you don't have a voter's card, you are not going to enter, you're not going to sell. So what the Jehovah's Witnesses, they have gone to buy, uh, to, to go and register, so once they ask, they show that voter's card. And then they can go and sell. You know what that means? The problems that they are having, they are beyond. If they are not going to get that voter's card, their children will die with hunger. This is what I mean. Come on the open and say, look, let's sort this problem out. Mm -hmm. And once we sort this problem out, we will be able now to stick to our doctrines, if ever. But I do not think that God is go would punish somebody who has saved the life of somebody. And I, I think the other way around, God is going to push that person up. That's what it is. And that's what I'm asking. This country has got a problem. And the problem is nothing else other than leadership problem. How confident are you that uh, uh, the Jehovah's, Witness, Jehovah's Witnesses will respond to the affirmative? I've just told you that I know that 30% of the Jehovah's Witnesses who are selling in markets, they've got voters cards. So they may not go to vote, but they have gotten them because they want to sell. Why do they want to sell? Because they want to feed their children. Is that across the country? I know about Lusaka. I know about Lusaka. I can't tell about cross, uh, it, it, across it, the country. Is the pool of the Jehovah's Witnesses, the pool you're relying on come 2021? Because currently, according to the Jehovah's Witness uh, register, we have about 223,720 witnesses in Zambia. Is this mm. the pool uh, you are relying on to get votes? You, you see, no, no, no. I rely on every Zambian. And every Zambian, uh, Zambia, I've got a very good um, uh, response outside there. And uh, I'm saying, you don't if, 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 vote, if, if, if I'm going vote. to have uh, another 100,000 votes from uh, that will make me, will give me a, a, a very big difference. Im imagine, imagine, if I've got 100,000 more than PF I would have won the elections, right? That's, that's what I'm asking. If each one of us, let's go outside there and make sure we, we, we get rid of this government, which is making us suffer. That's what I'm asking for. And this is a, it, it's a responsibility of everybody. When, when these problems come, they don't spare the witnesses. They are also dying. I'm just coming from the village where I will tell you where, where witnesses have been dying because they don't have medicine. So if the proper government is there, we can save the lives. Mm. We can send the witnesses, send their children to school. The witnesses want a piece of land. They want, they want where they can build uh, their house, where they can, they can uh, get their livelihood. Mm. So what I'm saying, Mr. Mwanza, truly speaking, is that this one time, let's unite and sort the problem. And thereafter, we can discuss again, rediscuss discuss again. again. Let me give you two responses that I got. This one says the act of voting is not a problem, but the act of voting for a particular political candidate or issue would be a problem. That would be a violation of our neutrality, and that would clearly not put us in line with the way Jesus would have acted. I don't think Jesus uh, would have uh, voted. Uh, if, if uh, you, you, you know what you are telling me? There's somebody there who is supposed to kill a child, and somebody who is saving a, a child. And then uh, uh, Jesus will say, I'll stay neutral because I, I let them all act according to what they feel. No. Jesus, God, perhaps let me go beyond. God gives us the willpower to choose what is right and what is wrong. He tells us, this is poison. This is sugar. If you take poison, you die. So you have the willpower to do it. You let the witnesses use their willpower to do the right thing. And the right thing is to save the Zambians. They've, they've been doing the wrong thing from time in memory, according to you? And th that question is a bit vague. It's a bit vague. I, I'm saying, I want to answer it like that, Mr. Mwanza. Because I'm, uh, just, I'm, just, I'm just saying what you have uh, uh, Because uh, uh, the other way, 
is, is, is true. Because when you say let them do the right thing, which means the other way around is, 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 is what is there now. You, you know, let me, I don't want to provoke anyone else, but I can tell you that leaders of all these institutions, mm. they live a better life than the person who is down there. It's all animal farm we're talking about. You tell me the leader uh, uh, of the overall boss of the witnesses in America does know what is going on? He doesn't know. Even the leader here in Lusaka, he doesn't know what, what I saw. Because it's, it's, Mr. Mwansa, people do not know, they just talk. Even some of the, my, my fellow opposition leaders, they don't know what they are talking about. I've seen it and I've lived it. That's it good. is yeah. not it's an easy thing. Mm. Our people are dying. Our people are suffering. Not this suffering that you are talking about here in Lusaka. I don't have a meal. I've only one meal. People are dying because they have got no access even to a very, not even to, to see where, where or to hear the name doctor. Nothing. They are just like animals. They get sick, they die. This is what it is. They don't even have, have, have uh, a, a place where they can get a hope to say tomorrow I'll wake up, things are going to be a bit better. I'm coming from there. Let me indulge you in the trip that you took and took to the eastern part of this country. Uh, well, give us, you know, uh, the highlights of the I do know for a fact that uh, some of your scheduled, scheduled rallies, you know, were stopped by the police. But just give us a highlight of how your trip has been to the eastern part of this country. You, you see, um, our party, as it is, the NAREP, is a very peaceful party. And, and that's one thing that is better. I think it's a better party than any other and where it comes to, 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 to peace. Uh, each town that I went to, the first thing that I did is to send my people to go to the police and uh, report that I'm in the town hmm. and I'm doing, I'm meeting my members. Just that. And uh, the first place, I started from the furthest. I started from um, um, uh, Chama. When I went, when I sent my people there, the first, the next thing that came is that they came over to say, no, you are not, this man shouldn't stay in town, should live within. And my people went to plead, so okay, let him just sleep and leave the following day. And that's what well, they given a reason why he should leave. They don't have any reason. He shouldn't be in this town. I'm a Zambian. I should not be in any of the district of Zambia. This is how worse it is in this country. I said, I'll comply. The following day, there were so many people who came, so many, and I said, I'm not going to have this meeting. We left. We went into villages. I started meeting people village for village and coming down, down, down. In Ilundazi, we had a, 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 a rally which was signed off. The policemen allowed us everything. Just when my people went to do the setup, two hours later the policemen followed us to say that rally has been cancelled. It comes from the top. I went to talk to the policeman. I said, my friend, uh, you do the right thing according to what your heart is. You are being misused. And I'll put it very clear the words I use. I said, it's just a matter of months. This government is going. And you don't want other people to vindicate you. Do the right thing. And those are the, the words I, I uh, and I'm repeating. This government of PF is going in 2021. And whoever is an agent of them, do the right thing. You don't want people to vindict you. Don't vindict other people. But that's, that's from the government point of view. Now I went into, I went village to village. And that's what I was doing. Village to village. And what we saw, what we met there, is sad. You have people, children who are 12 years old and they have got children. 13 years old, 14 years, they have got two children. This is what is there. And this, can, this government doesn't know. Doesn't know. You can't leave things like that. And these are the problems that are causing more problems. You, today we are 56 years old. There are areas since 1964 that have never been touched. They don't know anything. What campaign have these guys been doing? What are these campaigns are doing? Starting from MMD, coming to PF, what campaigns are they doing? When I go and I've seen what I've seen, and I can assure you, Mr. Mwansa, give me 10 years, this country is going to be a paradise. I'm saying it. 
I have seen, I've been there. There's a river, a river that connects Chipata to Lundazi, just when you are approaching. This river has a, a bridge, there's a bridge there, Lundazi River. The bridge got broken last year, it's two years now, and it killed the people. Seven people died on that bridge. That bridge is like that. You cannot cross. You have to go almost another 40, 50 kilometers all around to come to, come to, the, to, to the town. Now, what type of leadership? You have a bridge that is broken today. Then you are proudly coming to build these useless monsters of bridges that are in Lusaka, and you stand, stand there to say no to, to, to uh, Lusaka night developer. How do you do that? You know, for me, I find total, total disregard of the Zambian people. Whatever PF is using, those monies that are flashing around, they are not their monies. They belong to the Zambian you, people. You speak the, very passionately about how you transform Zambia I uh, will. To, to, to be like paradise, which I, which I find to be highly politically charge statement. No. Uh, because there was your friend Michael Sata who did promise us a lot of things, all right? There was a friend, your friend again, Boma Nusamba, who told us that, you know, uh, Zambia now looks like Dubai when it looks mm -hmm. like Zambia. But <laughs> you claim, uh, because, uh, your, 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 your rally was stopped in Lundazi, and you claim that uh, you've dismembered patriotic front structures. Is this true? Uh, what does that mean, dismembering patriotic front structures? You've dis disbanded patriotic front structures. Look, they don't have any structures there. The some PF people, they were coming to me, they are with me. The some PF people in the night, they were coming to my room and saying, Mudala, you are on the right path. Now to Churasana, do the right thing, we are with you. Same. Today I've been receiving phone calls from them to say, look, Mudala, on your right path. They are suffering. It doesn't spare anyone. You can't. Life is not about Boman Rusango. Life is not about these ministers who are here. And believe you me, anybody who wants to join NAREP, if you are going to be an MP of NAREP, you will not live in Lusaka. You will live in that area. Whether we make you a minister or not, you will live in that area so that you can feel what the people are feeling. That's what it's going to be. You, wh why should I fly around? I will walk. I would uh, go by bicycle. I will go by, by, by train. I will go by road. So that I see what people are suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, um, I speak very passionately. You know, Mr. Mwansa, that what I say, I do. What I touch, I do. And when I say 10 years, I'm not saying 90 days. Give me 10 years. Zambia is going to be a paradise. At least for not less than 80% of the people. Well, uh, <laughs> from, from what I observed, it seemed as if the northern, uh, eastern part of this country was your first, uh, uh, you spent a lot of days in the eastern part of this country. I don't know what you're trying to do in that particular area. Are there any plans that you have? Are, are you planning to make it your stronghold? Well, what is it that, uh, what, 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 what is that your back of your mind? Why didn't you perhaps start with Western Province, Southern Province, or such? Actually, I started with Western Province. I spent three weeks in Western Province. I spent uh, two mm -hmm. weeks in, in Wapula. And what are, what are the intentions? Really? I spent about the more, a lot of time in Southern Province. But uh, I will tell you, and I'm not lying, Eastern province is my stronghold. There is no party today, even this the, today, that can, can tell you what I'm telling you. I've been, I've, I've been with the chiefs, uh, some of the chiefs, not all of them, some of the chiefs. I've been with the headmen. Mm. I've been drowned in, on the ground. And my people are there working day in, day out. And I'll tell you very clearly that the so-called, this so-called, they are working with me. What, what, what are some of the opportunities you saw uh, in Eastern Province? You know, um, one of my best guys I was with, uh, he has never been to Eastern Province. Uh, he's Bemba. You know, when we crossed and we were coming back, you know what he told me? Hmm. He said, Eastern Province is a big farm. This is the, whole, the whole province is a farm. When you cross Luangwa River, you go into Nyimba, you go. Eastern Province is like really a big farm and you have taken they have taken people there for granted
the people there, the farm, like in the, in old days, with the a, a wooden a wooden plow with an ox in front. Today, but still they make it to feed the country, because the east, eastern province and southern province which feed the country. Now, if you're talking about bumper harvest and things like, where does it come from? The past few years, southern province has been having no rains. So it's the eastern province which has been, have been farming Zambia. And the people there, the people there, they are taken for granted. They are not being given proper fertilizers. They have no seed. It's terrible. It's really terrible. Now, look what this government has done now. Uh, they have left it to the international world to swallow their people. And when I say to swallow their people, they have introduced a seed. If you plant this year, next year you can't use that seed. You have to go back to them and buy. And this seed they have introduced, it needs fertilizers. So a poor man, a poor man who cannot afford the seed, who cannot fertilize, uh, afford the fertilizers, where have you thrown him? To poverty without levels. Totally down there. And that's what you see now. And that's why people are dying. People have no food. Those that are completely. And then there are massive of young people. The massive of young people, they have no jobs. That's why we say, us, we are going to create wealth in every district. There will be millionaires in Ilundazi, millionaires in Chama, millionaires in Nyimba, millionaires in Mansa, in Choma, everywhere else. And these will be young people. Because wealth is not in Lusaka. Wealth is in every district. How do you take a maize from Lusaka to be grounded, to, to, to be taken to, to, to maize from Chipata to be taken to Lusaka to be made into Mirabel and taken back? No. Make the factory there. How do you, in fact, look at things, what we eat as conflicts. When I was telling people to say, conflicts, Nayamala conflicts, conflicts, I mean, it's maize. But where is it coming from? From South Africa. Can we not make uh, conflicts in Ilundazi and export it to other countries? Can we make it, not make it in Choma? Why should it be like that? It comes back to the leadership. They have no vision. They don't even know that they can create a lot of wealth in Chama. Do you know that in Chama there is no uh, feeding station? There's no feeding station. And Chama is about almost over 200 kilometers from Lundazi. So if you are, you've got a tractor there, you have to go and buy fuel from Lundazi and take it there. Because the other side, the Longa River is cut, the bridge is not there. So wh what are you thinking about? What type of a country is this? There's no feeding station. You we had Zambia, to carry our... Huh? You make Zambia a paradise. Uh, yes. If, if Zambians give you an opportunity to govern this country for a period of 10 years. All right? Mm. We're discussing, is this a Zambia that we want? Uh, before we can get to, is this a Zambia that we want? I want you to paint us a picture of this paradise you are speaking about in your mind. Paint yes. us a picture of, 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 of what you, are, you do. Uh, first of all, all the youth will have jobs. All the youth will have jobs. And in each district will have millionaires, Zambian millionaires, young people like you. And if we have, let, let me take a small district, like Kalomo, for example. If we are going to have five millionaires in Kalomo, either they are dealing in meat, what, or they have got shops and so on and so on. These five millionaires in Kalomo, they are going to build other factories. They will go in other things which will employ people. We will not have people on the streets in Lusaka. All the people, they will go to, back to their districts because we will open, we will open up. The districts need to build factories. They need to build fa processing factories. They need to do mining where there's mining. They need to take care of tourism where they are. The opportunities are vast. 20 million people is nothing for seven and, over 750,000 square kilometers. 20 million is zero. Look, Malawi is a small strip of land, but Malawi has got the same population as Zambia. Malawi is smaller than Eastern Province alone, but it's got the same population. But you know, because we don't know what to do with our land, we don't know what to do with our minerals, we don't know what to do with our trees, our water, we, we stand, now we are lazy, we let the, 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 the foreigners come and take over. 
and your people are dying. This is what is there. Me, I will transform with my party, with my leadership, will transform Zambia into something. You are young. I can bet with you. You are young. You come and tell me here to say what you are t telling is the truth. It's, it's just as simple as all that. Stick to the values. Why do you want to steal money and, and, and build a house for yourself when others are dying? Why do you want to steal money and just take it to Dubai or take it to New York when the people are dying? You are stealing money to go and buy vehicles. You have got some of these guys go in front of their doors. They've got every vehicle. They've got Mercedes Benz, this Bentley, whatever. Do you need those things? You can only eat one Nshima, one plate of Nshima. You can't eat. They can bring you ten plates of Nshima. Uzadia pojabe most then wakuta. The others uzataya. Why do you want to do that? That's the greediness. The greediness that this government has. But, Zambia has enough yeah. things for all of us. Exactly. I think my question again, President Nyerenda, was that can you paint in our minds a picture of Zambia in paradise? Step by step. For example, <coughs> you tell us that, like, like you've rightly put it, that you create jobs for, for, yes. for almost all the youths. That's right? where it starts you, from. You haven't mentioned what you do with the women. You haven't mentioned what you do with uh, because I, I, I want let me take, take take just a cup of maize a cup of maize if I'm going to process it in whichever place I can make fit it's a processing plant that is going to employ youth and the women I will make uh, 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 these conflicts of different types I will make from that cup of maize, chichachapa kati chija. I can make it into man, like manure or process it into something that is usable like cardboard or some, something like that. So that cup of maize is going to, to, to create a lot of employment. And not here in Losaka, in districts. Now I'll take a tomato, that tomato. That tomato, I will create tomato paste. I can create tomato jam. I can create tomato juices. I can create other food stuffs. So that is another a million type. I will take cotton. Eastern province we've got a lot of cotton. I will make generis here and make gamut here. Not take it to China and then it comes back. No. From the cotton there, I will create everything that we, we are putting on. Here. And those are factories that are going to employ men and women and youth. And the Zambians will be behind it. Those Zambians behind it, they will be millionaires. I can go on and on. Mm. I, haven't touched, uh, I haven't touched minerals. I will get tobacco. Eastern province, there's so much tobacco. Yes. Of course it kills people, but it's something that people consume. Uh, let me go to cassava. Cassava has got a market like I don't know. In cassava, you make ethanol that you need in medicine, that you need to sanitize, that you need to make alcohol, that you need everything. In cassava, you make starch that you put in so many foodstuffs. Even in yogurt you eat, you can't have yogurt without starch. So all those are streams, where are you going to? You create this company because the people in the northern place, they know cassava very well. Create these factories in Mansa, in Kasama, in whatever and employ all those people. These street streets are going to be empty. Now, I will tell you a cassava, how cassava grows. Cassava, you cut that thing, you put it inside. You can even go. Come after two years, you find the cassava is there, if you are lazy. Like my, I call my, my mambuyas from the north, the lazy people, that's why they eat cassava. They put it inside there and go to sleep. And when they wake up after two, two years, they go and pick it. Well, fair enough. Uh, you see? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, and the question Please, that we, answer. We, 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 I also we... hope I'm not attacking you. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I know you are lazy. <laughs> <laughs> but but there, there, there are three classes of it. Just uh, picking on one issue that you've talk, talked about, issue of employment. Yes. Uh, there are three classes of people that we have in Zambia. Yes. There are those that are non-educated. They've never stepped in a classroom. Mm. There are those that are moderately educated. For example, they've, they've just switched up to grade 7 and up to grade 12. Mm. And there are those that are 
educated like yourself that have gone to university and, and, and all that, mm. how will you ensure that, number one, you create the jobs for the non-educated, those mm. that, that, that have not stepped into the class to understand the technical things that are needed for the industry to, to, to thrive? Mm -hmm. How will you create employment for those that are moderately uh, educated, and how will you create employment for the educated, like yourselves, the technocrats? Do, do you know, actually, that uh, America has got a lot of educate, uneducated people? Even Europe. I want to tell you that two of my friends, they are millionaires. They, they are not educated. They went up to grade 9. It's the, again the education system that I've touched to say, teach the skills, teach survival skills. If I'm in Siavonga, teach how I can live a, li a livelihood from fish. What we think is that you have fish, ma ma you, kill, you eat that fish, minga jamataya. In fish, everything can be processed. You can process even those, those bones to make uh, 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 feed. For, so teach the people the skills. Teach the skills. If I'm, 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 I'm in Imansa, where there's manganese, teach me the skill of, from manganese. Teach me the skill how I can live with my, 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 my cassava. And so on and so on. And this is what we have advocated. This is our manifesto, by the way. If you take that education, you know, it's not everybody who becomes, uh, who goes to the college. It's not everybody who goes to the university. No. But uh, all the people, all the people need to live in this society. And in fact, the majority of the people, there are those people who want to have a simple life. I'm, I've, I know how to read and write. I know how to speak English. I want a job and have peace. Give him what he can. And those are the people that I'm talking about. Those are the people that we need mm. well, to it, employ. It, it, it seems we're going to have a robust uh, uh, you know, uh, project of uh, teaching young people skills when you form government in 2021 because my, my statistics shows me that 55% of our youths are educated. Uh, so you know, you'll have to take all of them to school before you can give them... No, it's not true, Mr. Mwansa. I'll give you an example of your institution, which I've left. This institution, where you are now, where we are speaking about, this movie TV, when we started it, we didn't have people who were uh, educated to do the job. They all came inside here and ask them, you know your friends, they never came from the university. Some of them, they could only write their name and read a bit. When they came inside here, within the shortest period of another perhaps two or three months, they were full in action. And they learned. Today they are the ones who are operating on other places. I can tell you one of the big producers we have in Zambia, I'll mention his, his name, is Frank Sibuku, who does all this stuff that you are seeing on Movie Magic. That man was taught from these hands. When he came to movie TV, he didn't know all these things. He didn't know what, he, what a camera is and things like that. Within the shortest period, Frank picked it. Today, Frank is one of the biggest producers. That's what the people are glued at. That's what I'm talking about. So it's not, it's not as, as, as complicated as we take it. You want to tell people to say economics, what and what. Leave those jargon words. Come to the basics and do the basics. That's why me, I'm saying even, let me say this. Mm. This seed that we have today, we are going to discard it first of all. Because this seed is making us, enslaving us. Let's go back to the basics, simple basics. Teach the people how to do it. Even here, Mr. Mwansa, Mr. Mwansa, you have not gone, you, Mr. Mwansa, you yourself, Sorry to say that. I didn't want to say that. You are a product of this institution. You came here as a young man, a very young man, harmless, what? Very, very nice. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not harmful, am I? And now, you are one of the biggest <laughs> pre presenters. I don't know. I don't know who can stand now against it. was another man. So now you've taken over. You are one of the best presenters. There you are. Before you chaff me with those words. I'm not chaffing you. Discuss, I'm just telling you how the, we are going to transform the country. The national issues, uh, you know, President Nyerenda, you've spoken about how you create, you know, employment and everything like this. Now let's get to uh, one of the topical issues also that you're very passionate about, that is, that is, that is on your heart, the issue of education. You did yes. explain to us that you've been to, uh, you know, to, 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 to districts, you know, in Western province where you, you've seen high levels of people that are, not, that, that are not educated. Young people are just moving around in streets without their education. How do you intend to transform 
the Zambian education system and ensure that every child is in school? It is very simple. First of all, every child comes from the parent. Those are the people that we are going to engage first. Statistics should tell us to say, Mr. Mwansa, you have two children, and these two children, they are either going to school or not going to school. This, this you can go, you can get easily. And any parent who does not take his or her child to school, we will arrest. And I'm not joking. You are obliged to take the child to school. If you don't and you are alive, you are there, we will arrest you. Because you are depriving the rights from a human being who is your child. So we will make sure that from the statistics, we know how many children we have in, 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 Mon in Mongo. We know how many children we have in, 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 in Livingstone. We know how many children we have all over. And we will know which schools they're going to. And we, can, we, should be able, we should be able to create a database that will tell us. You know, this is why I say, I said before, people are dying without being captured. Every Zambian needs to be captured because as our, our doctrine says, our, we are saying, every Zambian has got the right to live. Every Zambian has got the right to the wealthy of Zambia. Every Zambian has got the right to the education as well as all the social services that are being given by the Zambian government. And no one should mm. uh, deprive another. You, you make education a right. The biggest issue is not about uh, it being a right, but the biggest issue is about affordability. Are these parents able to afford to take their child to school? That is the biggest issue, President. Oh, we are... And, 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 we... And, 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 and I want to come to that. How will you ensure that education is affordable for everyone? Education is going to be free. The parent just needs to take that child to school. It's free. It will be free. Mr. Mwansa, me, I went to free education from grade one up to university. I've never paid any penny. How now should I tell to say the young people are coming like you paid money? You shouldn't. You shouldn't. You know, the, 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 it, it's, it's an example that I'm giving, Mr. Mwansa. You are not yet married. You can go and have a cup of tea, you sleep or you cook and shima, you sleep. Immediately you are going to get married. Your budget is going to change and you must plan. And after that, there will be a child. Immediately, if you are eating kapamera, you have to increase. And so on and so on. What this, this, this leadership has done of Zambia is that they knew and we know statistically that we are getting children and we are getting more and more, but they are not planning to increase the infrastructure to increase those social services. They are not. They are limited. Can you imagine in Lusaka? In Lusaka, when I was growing up, we had lots of all those places where children can go to play. What has these, these leaders do, done? They have gone there to build the houses on them. They have grabbed them, and some of them given them to foreigners. Then, as if it's, you are not a parent. What type of leadership is this? It's all about leaders. There where you have, inter, where you have um, a city, city center now mm. in Lusaka, that was a square, a powerful square. When I was living in Lusaka, it was school. could sit there, there were banks and so on and so on. When I came back from Europe, I found that these guys have given it to other people. Today, the council has even sold it to private people. What type of thinking is that? This is why I'm talking about leadership. And I get so passionate about it. You've got the leaders who have no vision. They don't know what they come. Some of them, they just came. Is that President Lungu has I mean, No, no, no. Mm. no, no, no. I don't insult. I wouldn't <laughs> say that to to our Republican president. Let's, no. let's I, to want, I wouldn't even say that to any of the presidents. I want to be very respectful. But you said no, Pamamba, you don't know, you know, even when they are, who is Pamamba now? No, Pamamba, Siva Lungubeka. Pamamba, my ministers, my MPs, what? Even in any Pamamba. Fair enough. Let's, yes. get to, let, let's get to uh, <laughs> another issue. Just within the education system, I do know for a fact, I think I'll be doing a disservice to the, to the government of this republic if I don't say I've also been a product of free education. I was given free education to the highest learning institution in the country. Yes. That is the University of Zambia. Yes. The government did sponsor me 100%. But looking at uh, the sponsorship of government to higher uh, tertiary education, there's a limited number of people that are, are sponsored, right? Maybe you find that only 3,000 have been sponsored to, you know, for, 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 for free education. And, uh, you know, the process is a bit tedious. You have to get, you know, my points, and all that. Mm. 
But how will you ensure, Pres uh, President Nyerenda, that everybody has access to these loans that the, the University of Zambia gives, these loans that the Copperbelt University gives? They, they are not even the loans. You know, in fact, I don't even talk about the university. I'm talking from grade one. Even that 200 kwacha, that is as even a 50 kwacha, that 50, 50 kwacha, that is as people don't have. People don't have even five kwacha. I, w I went around, you can ask around with people, that people don't see even five kwacha. They are asked, if you don't bring five kwacha, your child will stay home. They can't take a five kwacha. These people, these, everyone should be in the hands of the government. The government has got the responsibility to educate. And it's not only us. I will tell you Scandinavian countries, they have a free education from zero up to university. They may put a levy when you finish. That's not a problem. If today somebody asks Mr. Nyenenda, can you uh, uh, contribute, I'll be very happy. Because they have educated me, I'm there. What we are saying, it's all about the planning. Now, <clears throat> Mr. Mwansa, let me say this. Let me not go any further. Just the monies that are being stolen from one ministry, Minister of Health, just monies that are being stolen from there. I don't want even to go deeper. If you saved those monies, literally, can you not change your budget? Then now, let me leave this, uh, uh, this corruption. Let me come to agriculture. Agriculture today, Zambia is getting you, you, zero. You, you have not finished on the, on, on the part of the education because I think... Not so long ago, I'll give an example, President Nyerenda. Not so long ago, we did see, uh, you know, a riot, you know, at the highest learning institution in the country because yes. students failed to pay uh, for their tuition fees. And I want you to speak directly to, to that particular situation because there are a number of, you know, uh, people that are, are, are done with grade 12, want to get into university, but they don't have money for university. I want, I want, I want you to give us a clear picture. Yes. Of what you intend to do with higher education. Uh, Are you going to make it free as well? You've spoken about a grade 1 to grade 12 not paying anything, but higher education. Will you make it free as well? And yes. What is your plan? For if, if you see on our, our, our manifesto, it says education is going to be free from grade 1, from 0 to the highest institution, up to research centers. And we will not only educate young ones, even old ones who want to get educated, we will educate them for free. But when you stopped me, I was trying to tell you where the monies are going exactly. to come that, from. That, 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 that was precisely my next question. Where yes. are you going to, how are you going to finance uh, the free education? First of all, let me just leave the corruption. I don't want to talk about corruption. Let me talk about agriculture. If I, I have, I, on this program, I've said it one time. When you look at our budget, you look at income and expenditure. There is an expenditure, the current one, of six billion kwacha going into agriculture, what they call FISP and things like that. Mm. When you look at income, there's a zero from agriculture. Do you know what that tells me? There's no manager. There's no leadership. I cannot give out money and I don't get anything. Who pays? Where do they get from? So, agriculture alone, if I give six, six, six billion, I must get at least 18 billion out. I must get at least 12 billion out. I must get at least six billion plus something. There is zero. So, can you imagine, year in, year out, they take six billion or perhaps five billion or four billion and put it in agriculture and go and fold their arms to say we are helping. What type of thinking is that? What type of management is that? It, this completely shows there's no business like that in this world. There's no free lunch in this world. People must work. The young people that you educate up to university level, when they move out from there, they are going to develop your country, and the country will be flowering. That's how it's supposed to be. We have, uh, there's a sentence that, that somebody uh, gave me, perhaps on another side. We have actually misled the executive. You, the people who started the FISIP, I'm telling you, I'll tell them, whether it started in, in MMD uh, Chiruas government, whether it was President Nawakwe, they did not think properly. They did not finish their thinking. This FISIP thing is killing people. Give people enough so that they can produce and have profit. From the profit, you reinvest. There's nothing else in this world other than that. Agriculture is going to create a lot of money. There's tourism. Look at, the, again, the budget itself. 
There's no money from tourism. Tourism is like money dropping wagona, ziku guachabe, if you have laid the ground. But who is controlling tourism today? It's not a Zambian. Tourism is in the hands of the so-called uh, uh, Indian, uh, Asian, Zambian community. It's in the hands of the white man. A black man is not given that stuff. Where on earth? As we end up, wapangago kachite chika kaloji uku, you are part and parcel. But the main areas where tourism is seeing animals, what and what, all, all those things are not in the hands of Zambians, if at all less than 1%. They are controlled by the, 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 the Indians. They are controlled by the white people. Where? That's our money. It's not money that they should take and take it outside there. The bills are being paid outside there. So tourism has a lot of money. Agriculture has a lot of money. I, don't, I haven't even touched the minerals which we have in abundance. Let me go on just precious stones. Emeralds. Who is the mining emeralds in this country? It's again the same Indians. The Indians and the, the whites and the other foreigners is not in the hands of the Zambians. So you are basically suffering everything that you have, taking it outside. And then you say, where are we going to get the money to educate our people? Then you say, we don't have money. We have a lot of money, but as I said, mm. it's the leadership. There's no management whatsoever. And I hear certain friends of mine who are telling you, say, I'll fix this country. How are you going to fix it? Tell the people. The way I'm explaining now. Tell the people how you fix it. All these things, they are lined up. Us will make sure every district is their millionaires. Starting from Mazabuka, Monze, Choma, Kaya, Kaoma, Lundazi, mm. Wati, Mansa. For, for and people they will create take, wealthy. And for, Zambia for, for, will be one of the richest. For, for people to, you know, to, 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 to be prosperous to that level where the millionaires, obviously uh, the environment has to be conducive in which they are operating in. How will you ensure that you create an enabling environment for young entrepreneurs, or ge generally for just entrepreneurs in this country? Yes, I will tell you um, uh, how it works. Simple. If you want to produce something, you visualize to say, even today, we can take a simple thing. You say, I want to have a car. Then you start thinking, how am I going to have a car? So, all I want to, you, you will need to have the capacity to have a car. Now, here I'm saying, I want to create my people, my young people, to be millionaires. So I look at sector by sector. I can take agriculture, I can take mining, I can take whatever I want to take. I can even take simple trading. Let me ask my question again. Let me finish. Let me ask my question again, so you understand it clearly, okay. President Yorenda. The biggest issue here has been that uh, you claim that Zambia is for Zambians and, yes. and for this country to develop only Zambians, you know, who develop this country. But also you, 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 you cry that uh, the modes of production are being run by foreigners. And that's yes. the reason why, uh, you know, Zambians are, 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 are not developing to, to, to the extent where they become millionaires. Yes. And my question is, uh, that has been precipitated, precipitated by the fact that uh, a favorable environment hasn't been created. By the leadership, right? So you agree obviously, there's no obviously, bad obviously, obviously, you know, a mm. non-favorable environment has not been created. And my question is, how will you ensure that a favorable environment is created for this person in Kalomo, for this person in Mazabuka, for this person in Sasheke? How will you ensure that a favorable environment that puts Zambians first is created as opposed to putting foreigners first? That's my question. It's the leadership. It's, it's the doctrine of, of Dane. It's what we are saying we are going to do. But let me tell you, and a very practical, simple example that people can see. I'll put a ShopRite. Yeah. ShopRite does import all these things. If I'm going to say, Mr. Mwansa, get 20 people of your caliber and put them together, you're going to have uh, economists, you're going to have accountants, you're going to have uh, engineers, you come together. You say you want to run a business like ShopRite. So, let me put it like that. I will say, Mr. Mwansa, we will help you to get a credit facility. If you need five billion, we will help you, and us will be just guarantor. It's you. And then, Mr. Mwansa, we will make sure that the, the next 10 years, you don't pay any duty, you don't pay any taxes, you don't pay anything. That's for Zambians, not only foreigners. Oh, Zambia. Today is done for foreigners, not for Zambians. You see, we make it for you. 
and we'll make sure that the guys who are running ShopRite, they are going to pay 10 times as much. Your competition with them is going to be so favorable. We will let you compete for the next, we will let you, hold you, the next three, four years, we just give you all these incentives. After that, you are going to be so far that you're going to defeat all these guys who are getting things from outside. Because we would have made you, first of all, have 100% duty-free, 100% tax-free, 100% money that you are borrowing, that's which has got favor. That's which don't believe. That's free lunch. No, it's Look, not, you, it's you, not you, a free lunch. You charge the, the foreigners that are already running these business entities 10 times more. Yes. You're creating a, a, an environment that is unfavorable for investors uh, to come uh, invest uh, in your country. Yes. But that, that is destroying the president. Why, no, it's not why, destroying. Why don't you uh, create a pari passu environment you, where you, you everybody... Know, <clears throat> You know, if, if, if there's free lunch for Zambia, let, let mm. them be, because we're, we're living in an open economy where, mm. you know, why don't you do it like that? No, it doesn't work like that. I will tell you this. I, I will tell you an example of a country that I know. If you, Mr. Mwansa, you are going to bid for a job, say you are from a named country in Europe, there's a job that is given in Zambia. We are asking for bids from this country. So, you, Mr. Mwansa, you are a resident of that country. But you are not a, 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 a citizen. Me, I'm a citizen. The government there, they are going to say, you both can bid. But you, Nirenda, as a citizen, we are going, first of all, to give you um, uh, money without any interest. One. Two, we are going to make sure that you stay for another five years without paying that money. Three, we will put some conditions. Once you do that, these are those areas which we can open for you within that country. Whilst you, who is just a citizen, you have to pay all these things. It's normal. I've seen it. I've experienced it. By so doing, I will be able to get the job because I can offer less. I don't pay taxes and so on and so on. And the money is cheap. And this is what is happening. It's all over. Why do you think there's war between Europe and America over agriculture? Because the European agriculture is done the same way that I'm talking. The co Americans are complaining to say your goods are very cheap. Because of these subsidies, that's, I've just opened you just like a small tip of the iceberg that we are having. We know how these things fu function. I don't just stand up and say I, I'm going to be a president tomorrow and I'm going to make sure that these things are done in 10 years. No. I'm a person who makes sure I do my homework and everything else before I go to write an exam. I have done my preparation for this country. And when I go to write an exam, I'm going to get more than 90%. And I'll, I'll make sure this country is better in 10 years' time. I know we will sit here one day, and you are going to say, you man, you are telling the truth. <laughs> but, of, but of course, um, you've spoken about how you will transform Zambia, mm. and you've clearly you know, highlighted to the Zambian people how you intend to do it. Yes. They want to know that, look, uh, yes, President Yerenda has explained to us what he's going to do in terms of creating employment, agricultural sector, the education system, and everything like that. How prepared are you as a party as we build to the 2021 general elections. How prepared are you? We have less than, is it eight months to go before next year's elections? Uh, be a, I think there's enough time. You saw me what I'm doing. It's enough. I know what I'm doing. It's enough. It's enough. I don't go to write an exam without having prepared. I will make sure that I have prepared. If I'm not prepared enough, Mr. Mwansa, just a month before, I will tell you to say I haven't done enough job. All right. As, as you, I'm that particular yeah, person. I want you to give your concluding remarks as you face the people of Zambia in their faces. Appeal to their hearts. And, uh, you know, just give them your words from your heart as, as we conclude. This program was about... Um, is it because what we're discussing, is this a Zambia that we want? That's, yes. That's a, that, that is the topic that we're discussing. Yes. Here. Uh, you've highlighted what you would do in 10 years, but maybe in 30 seconds. Yes. You know, appeal to the... I, I, I want to outside. appeal to all Zambians outside there. All Zambians outside there. Please, there is still uh, uh, enough, there is still time. Go and get your NRC if you haven't. Go and get the voters card and make sure that you come 
2021, on the, uh, on the 12th of August, we kick out this government. We bring in Nareb. Bring at me, and believe you me, you will see that this country will get better. Zambians for Zambians. Only Zambians will develop this country. We've been discussing, is this the Zambia we want? My guest this evening has been president of the National Restoration Party, Stephen Yorinda. Mr. President, once again, thank you so much for having made time to appear on the assignment. Thank you. Thank you so much to my producer and director, Mavuto Piri. See you on Wednesday for yet another special edition of the assignment program. For now, good night. Good night. Thank you.